Okay, so what's common about the sensory pathways? Well, for, for several of them, one of the common things is that there's a funnel that is going to gather stimuli. And this is exemplified by this lovely uh, sculpture that I've always loved where uh, this, this young boy puts a, 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 a shell up to his ear and, and hears the ocean. And it, when we talk about hearing, we will talk about why uh, he indeed does hear the ocean and why you would hear the ocean in that situation. Um, so this, the, 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 there, are sen there are funnels for vision, for smell, for uh, hearing, and for taste, right? You get the information into your ear, into your eye, into your nose, into your uh, oral cavity. One of the interesting things is that there's no funnel for which, for what system, one, what big system? The somatosensory system. There's the, the somatosensory system enters over the entire uh, body, not just the, the surface of the body, but also the uh, internal organs. Um, so there, there is no funnel. You can't turn somatic sensation off you, as you can close your eyes or cover your ears or, or um, pinch your nose uh, closed. You cannot turn somatic sensation on and off. And in fact, there are no known uh, conditions where anyone has a, a complete lack of somatic sensation and perhaps Perhaps that is in part because there's no funnel. There's no place where the, there's a bottleneck where you can cut off all the um, uh, all, all the input. Okay, so after the funneling into uh, into the correct organ or or the not funneling in the case of somatic sensation, the the first step in this is what's called transduction, and that is to take the stimulus energy and turn it into uh, neural energy. And we have adapted to be sensitive to a set of stimuli that were important to us through evolutionary time. It's not the only set of stimuli that one could be sensitive to. Obviously, bats hear at much higher frequencies. Shrimp see at different uh, wavelengths than what we see. Uh, but this is the this is the set of stimuli that ha that that evolution um, selected for. So a sensory cell, either a neuron or not a neuron, is going to take stimulus energy and turn it either into packets of neurotransmitter, released neurotransmitter, in the case of a not neuron, or into action potentials in the case of a neuron. In either case, it's going to access the nervous system. From from this transduction, from, from turning this into uh, uh, neural energy, there is, a, there is some kind of a um, electrical uh, potential that's generated, a receptor potential, and then there is transmission. So that information gets taken into the central nervous system and then passed all the way up to get to perception. And how do you get to perception? Well, you have to reach the cerebral cortex. Okay, so re remember we talked about primary cortices. So there's a primary somatosensory cortex, a primary auditory cortex, a primary visual cortex. There's also a primary gustatory cortex, um, but it, of much less uh, in clinical importance for us. So in primary somatosensory cortex, visual cortex, or auditory cortex, what you will get is a very fundamental sensation. As, as we've touched on before, uh, what you would get, say, if, if um, this, this is the cerebral cortex of man, which is a, a book by Penfield and Rasmussen. Penfield was a uh, neurosurgeon, and he uh, when, when a person does neurosurgery, they actually typically have the patient awake um, or, or for, some, for a, a wide variety of neurosurgery um, procedures. The, the person is awake and is it a partner in that neurosurgical uh, procedure. So Penfield would go in and stimulate to see where he was. And he, he gathered all this information from hundreds of patients and if he was in a somatic, if he was in a primary cortex, what he found was that the what the people said were very um, fundamental, but not not normal 
perceptions. There are fundamental sens sensory blocks. So I see flashing lights. I feel a, a, some kind of a tingling or a numbness or a, or a poke onto my finger. But it wasn't a, a well-rounded perceptual experience. Whereas when you get out of the primary sensory cortices, you get a much more robust experience, such as I hear an orchestra playing. I see an old friend's face, okay? So that um, perception takes not only the primary sensory cortex uh, of relevance, but it also takes processing through, through the neocortex, and it takes a lot of processing. That's the big, heavy job of perception, is to figure out, to interpret what all this sensory information means, okay? So perception is all about interpretation. That's where the, that's where the neural architecture is, is focused. There is an interesting feature about perception, which is that we modulate it at every, at every step of the way. Um, it can be modulated up in the neocortex. It, the transmission of this information can be modulated. And we can even modulate the stimulus. We're going to see an example of how we modulate the stimulus in the auditory system. And you can certainly modulate the transduction. And that uh, we'll see examples of that in the, in the somatosensory system. OK, so we, um, the, all the pathways, all the sensory pathways go through this basic um, structure, this basic sequence. And what we're going to look at next is how neurons actually code for information within this.